Uh, Chino and Sean, Donnie from the Point in St. Louis. How you gentlemen doing today? What's up, Donnie? Doing good. Great. Well, uh, first and foremost, I would like to uh, to let you know that I listened to this album this morning from start to finish and then start to finish again. And it's really freaking fantastic. The album is called Good Night, God Bless, I Love You, Delete, and it's out on Friday. So I think the first thing is, gentlemen, nicely done. It's a great freaking record. Thanks, man. Thanks. I mean, Thank you. also, also, I like the idea that you listened to it and uh, started it over again. I, I, I've done the same thing. I feel like the way the record is sort of sequenced and, you know, that's kind of the thing that we miss, you know, I think making albums, you know, where you feel like you kind of go through a journey and then at the end, you kind of want to start it over again. So I'm glad that that that's that was your experience. It absolutely was. And I tell you, one of the things, because I do our new music show here at the radio station. So like I'm constantly listening to things every day, every week. And I get so in the habit of listening to to a single or two that, man, when you get that record that really catches you from start to finish, it's it, 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 it honestly, it brings me back to being a younger guy, getting a CD or a cassette tape and putting it in and going along for the ride it is, it, you know, and so I'm kind of trying to go back to that a bit. But one of the things that I wanted to ask you guys first and foremost is, you know, when this crosses things started for you guys, you know, decade or more ago, was the idea just a couple of buddies making music and seeing what happens? Did you have like sort of a an idea of where you wanted this to go or was it just kind of like a fun thing that turned into something? Uh, definitely the latter. I mean, we, you know, it, we didn't have a, a, this giant plan other than, you know, Sean and I have, uh, you know, we've been friends for since our, you know, late teens and, and, uh, you know, we both grew up in Sacramento and, you know, we found each other pretty young and both in both in bands playing, playing music and, you know, always wanted to do something together, but never really, you know, just got it together. And, um, and he moved down to Los Angeles. I, I followed soon after and we lived in the same neighborhood and I'd always just go over to his house and just see what he's working on. And, and, uh, you know, one time I went over there and he was working on some stuff and I, I, I got, I got involved somehow. And, you know, we, we just sort of started making stuff, like you said, for fun and, uh, kind of put it out there. Didn't, you know, kind of unsolicited and, you know, uh, just kind of put a, put an EP out on the internet without really telling anybody about it and kind of let people discover it themselves. And, you know, it felt like a very organic sort of way to, to do music. And, you know, it kind of kept the fun in it as well, because there wasn't these big ex expectations of, you know, here's another project. It's more like, you know, if you, if you find it and you like it, great. Right. I, I wonder about that. I, I want to hit on that real quick, you know, because like, I, I, I really like when you guys have things like this, because, Honestly, it feels like as a fan, I feel not only that the love that you have for the music that you're making, but just the love of making music in general. And can you kind of talk about like what that's what that's like to be free to record and not have the pressure overhead for it to just be to make you and Sean happy and that's it? Yeah, I mean, it's lovely when you can be in that predicament. You know what I mean? Uh, right. Once you once, usually once, you know, you get. Uh, record labels and management and all this other stuff which is very you know it's 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 lovely but you know that's when a lot of the pressure you know of, of meeting meeting deadlines and things like that kind of come in and sometimes that can be helpful for us because it gives us a little nudge to you know to finish things up but um but other than that like you know yes it's it's a privilege to be able to to make music and it not be you know uh in a situation where it's dire, you know, it's just something that, you know, is a passion. So, so we're very lucky for that. Absolutely. And it seems as though, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that like this band very much, I guess all bands kind of do, but like this band seems to really like lend itself for what I would believe would be like experimentation in the studio where you guys get to sort of, as we just talked about, have fun in testing things out and trying things out. Are you guys experimenting a lot and quote unquote playing and having fun there in the, in the studio? Is, is that how this all kind of comes together? Def definitely. I mean, um, you know, all a, a major, I would say a majority of these songs are just, just fooling around, you know, just fooling around in the studio and, you know, getting getting a new piece of gear, op opening it up, getting it out of the box, plugging it in, and then sometimes you know uh, that's that's what I love about uh, music, especially these days, is that you know the technology 
you know, we've come so far and, and how that, that influences the music. And it's, it's, it's just, it's beautiful. It's like, you know, it makes you feel like a, like a 13 year old kid just, you know, on Christmas, you know, opening up yeah. something and plugging it in and, and just being inspired. I also find it very awesome how it seems like all of the musicians I know are absolute gearheads through and through. So like whatever the little newest technology or newest thing that they get, they legitimately are like giggling over it. Like I did when I got a super Nintendo, you know what I mean? Like, it, like just that kind of like unabashed, like sort of excitement. I love seeing, um, you know, like just with things like gear and things, it just gets to show kind of the depths uh, the, of the love of musicians in which that you guys are, I think. You know what I mean? Just like, I guess, if a carpenter got a new tool, same kind of situation. Oh, totally. 100%. 100%. All right. So on this album, you have two of my very favorite human beings outside of you two, of course. And that is abs- the brilliance that is LP from, from Run the Jewels. Uh, and then also Robert Smith from The Cure are, are on the are both on this record. When you have them on the album, do you have an idea at first that that's who you want to do this part? Or do you just kind of make a call? How do those kind of things come together, gentlemen? Well, both were, were pretty, you know, done pretty late in the game. I mean, we had, you know, both songs already sort of, you know, you know, 85, 90% finished um and it was towards the the end of you know sort of our re, you know recording this record and you know for instance the robert smith thing was was um you know something that i just thought you know this would be really cool if we can you know obviously i have a friendship with him so it wasn't like just a complete cold call you know i, I hit him up and and said hey i have this, this idea you know i have this this lyric in the song i'll send it to you you know but it'd be really neat if you'd be down to just like sing over it and and sort of surprise you know people as, as far as like i mean i know the news is out now but my, my initial idea was like wouldn't it be awesome to just be hearing the song and you get you know a quarter of the way through it all of a sudden you know his voice comes out with his, his unmistakable voice you know yeah. it's, it's sort of in there and then people start to question it so um i mentioned that to him and he he, he was like totally down to do it and at that point i i told sean because because i actually wanted to surprise him too and then and yeah, he came through it and, and, um, and, and, you know, it, it's just, it turned out wonderful, you know, just to hear his voice, especially singing something that, you know, so a phrase that I wrote was just insane. You know, um, one of those things where, you know, if I was a kid and he told me that I, I would have not have believed you at all. He just sounds beautiful on that track too. Holy cow. Right on. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's, it's probably one of the saddest songs on the record. So I just feel like that vibe is just like, you know, it just sort of like is the perfect marriage of his voice and, and the vibe of that song for sure. And what about LP? Uh, LP was, was, was as, as well. It was like, you know, the song was almost there. We had this bridge section and, you know, we, we had an idea to build it out musically, but, you know, then Sean had mentioned like, what if we get, you know, someone to, throw like 16 bars over this and you know the first person that came to both of our minds was lp um the run the jewels record at that time was you know i we've been listening to that record a lot and and you know been fan been fan and friends with him for a while um so kind of the same thing i reached out to him and we uh we actually sent him a version of of the song with him already in it where where sean found a, a acapella of him from run the jewels and threw it in there just as a placeholder to kind of like see what it sound like and as soon as his, you know, we threw that in there, we were like, wow, this is awesome. Sent it to him and he was like, I'm down and, and you know, ended up writing a you know, new part, obviously, for it and and sent it back. And, you know, another one of those things where, you know, it's just like, you know, it wasn't it wasn't something that we had planned all along. But the, the fact that it was kind of, kind of just on a whim, we just thought of it and and, uh, you know, it just worked out. And, you know, we're pretty it down. Absolutely. I, do you guys do you guys make these? And I, I'm sure you don't, but like there are are inherently a few records that are in my record collection that when I go to listen to them, I want to put headphones on and listen to them. The first one that comes to my mind is Radiohead OK Computer because I want to hear every single everything. I feel like Crosses make some of the best goddamn headphone records that are out there right now. Do you guys I, I, this is kind of a silly question, but do you guys sort of do that on purpose? I mean, it, it just they're so many layers and so much depth to what you guys do here i just feel like i want to have a closer ear on what it is so that i can catch the things that you guys are doing but i assume that that's not like a purposeful thing necessarily 
I mean, uh, you know, Sean and I would say Sean and I are both cut from that same cloth. I mean, we're both very into sounds and stuff. And it's funny you use, use that OK Computer reference because yesterday I was actually reading an article. I actually didn't finish reading it, so I saved it. But it was it was basically uh, kind of going through all the gear that they used making that making that record. So I went song to song, like every piece of gear that they used making that record. And that's how, you know, it's kind of stuff we nerd out on, for sure. Go ahead, Sean, what were you saying? Uh, yeah, just, I mean, to me, uh, the, always the best albums are, are, you know, every time you listen to them, you, you hear something new that you didn't hear the time before. And, you know, I, I guess maybe I, I sort of, I, I probably don't even think about that, but you know, when we're making it, but it's probably just, it, it, it's in my, it's in my DNA at this point. You know, I, I listen to music the same way and sometimes you'll, you'll hear an album and, and on the, on the left side, you were like, Oh, what's that sound that comes in at, you know, at, you know, a minute 30, like, uh, but it's only on the left, you know? Right. And just stuff like that is just, is so cool. It's so amazing when you can geek out with your friends about little parts of songs and things, you know, like I, I, that's just one of my very favorite things to do. And I think that, again, as I said before, that, that you guys just lend yourselves so much to that. The new album from Crosses is out uh, on Friday. It's called Good Night, God Bless, I Love You, Delete. And uh, you guys are doing some tour dates. Um, you're playing, I saw, at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, which just has to be amazing and eerie and creepy and awesome all at the same time to play at a place like that, I would assume. Yeah, yes, I'm looking forward for to sure. that. I've never, I've, I think Sean has been there for a show before, but I haven't. So, and I've only heard great things about it. So it's going to be a good, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's one of the first shows we're, we're, you know, us playing back too. So I'm very excited about it. Well, that's fantastic. Gentlemen, thank you so very much for your time. Continued success. I just, you know, I the, the Permanent Radiant EP that came out last year was fantastic, and I played it on my new music show. We started with Invisible Hand way early as soon as we got it because it's so good. So, I mean, we're just fans here in St. Louis. We love what you guys do. Keep doing it, and we would love to see you in St. Louis at some point if that makes sense. Awesome. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you so much. Re really, really appreciate it.